What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Songbird, and I want to welcome you guys back to another episode of Room 1002 Exclusives. If you're joining me here for the very first time, I want to welcome you into the room. You just stumbled upon the channel that's showcasing Atlanta's hottest up-and-coming artists, creatives, and innovators. Today's special guest is none other than DJ Golden. And listen, y'all, not only is she an Atlanta native, but she has taken Atlanta by storm in multiple ways, from creating to photography, DJing, drumming. I mean, you name it. I'm going to let her talk about herself, but I want to remind y'all before we get too deep into it, do not forget to like and share this video, but most importantly, subscribe to the channel. DJ Golden, welcome to the room, girl. Hey. (laughs) That was the the most awkward A ever. (laughs) How you feeling today? You know, I'm feeling all right. It ain't too hot outside. You know, it's I don't have no complaints. I know? feel like it's like Atlanta doing that fake summer thing. So it's you got to you got to be sure. Rain, as soon as it rains, it's going to be cold again. You know, I'm like tired I'm it. tired of switching my air on and off. It's mm-hmm. it's quite annoying. Yeah. But listen, I'm so excited to have you here, to have you here with me. Um, I know that I feel like, personally, that I've been pulling teeth to get you to do this interview. Y'all, she be acting Yee. fake shy, but she mix and mingle with so many different groups, and it's always in the Atlanta streets. So how you too shy to come on Room 1002? It has nothing to do with Room 1002. I tell people <laughs> this all the time. Like, I'm shy. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, I am. But that has nothing to do with that. It's just been a, a, a ongoing process. But, of course, you know, I support anything you do. So Y'all, this my girl. We've been rocking since... If I tell them, they might know our age. I mean, y'all already know my age. I mean, you old, so she's older than I. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I'm not. I'm not doing this with All you today. Right, I got you. Go ahead. I'm not doing this with you today. But listen, seriously, y'all. If you know us from Pebblebrook, you know we've been rocking since. I would say I was a ninth grader. She was a 10th grader, but I knew her even before that. Shout out to Vanderia for all them basketball games at her driveway. <laughs> way, way back in the day. For sure. Uh, but listen, Golden, I want to allow you the opportunity to just tell us a little bit about yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, you can just kind of start with your background and, you know, how you how you kind of got to this point. Yeah, um, it's been an interesting process. No, I didn't think that this is what I'd be doing even when you first start started coming out of, you know, Atlanta with me. Um, but like, yeah, you know, I DJ, I'm playing drums, I do videos, photography. Actually, I'm leaving here to do a video when I get done. Come you know on, booked and busy. Um, yeah, like I say, I never thought that this is this is what I'd be doing. Yeah, well, I can say that um the entire time that we've been friends, you have definitely been big when it comes to musical mm-hmm. influence. I feel like that was kind of like our love language. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to eat and we're going to sit in the car and listen to music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so can you kind of walk us through, you know, when you first kind of fell in love with music? Like, can you really remember when you had that experience where you were like, I think I want to, like, do this with my life? Like, Okay, well, music wasn't really a choice for me. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Um, I, I only mean that my family, you know, did music in church. Mm-hmm. So it was, like, something that from birth that I was just immersed in. And um, from there, you know, somehow I just started watching the drummer when I was at church. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's I guess that's where that started. And then my mom had gotten into, like, this singing group. And so I used to watch this guy. His name is um, Scooter. Okay. I used to watch him play. But that was a big part of me, like, growing with that. He was on the drum line. And so who ended up teaching me when I was in high school, actually, was, you know, he had taken me to one of those rehearsals when I was well underage. You know what I'm saying? But it's just crazy, full circle, to see that come around. But, you know, once I got to high school, I didn't know how to read music like the rest of the other kids. You know, I really struggled with that at first. But... Once I got to high school, they really put me on the most difficult instrument that you could possibly be on. Mm -hmm. And um, it just kept going up from there. Yeah, I it's funny to hear you say that you didn't know how to read music because that's something that I would have never known. So you was you was Nick Cannon in us. Yeah, I mean, okay. as as much as, you know, we we couldn't stand Mr. Thomas sometimes. That man taught us that theory. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know. That's really where I learned it all. My freshman year, like, they was just on me, dr- drilling this stuff into mm-hmm. me. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty smart for the most part. Yeah. And so I pick I pick up on things fast. Mm-hmm. 
once I knew it, I was like, oh, this cake, you know, it's, yeah. it's simple, it's straightforward, you know. Yeah, and I can tell that you pick up quickly on things because you just told us you do 30,000 things as yeah. a career. So, yeah. I mean, you have to be quick on your feet and able to adjust and flexible right. and all of that just to even hold and wear that many hats. Right. Um, and I kind of want to go back just a little bit because I know that you, you spoke about it being full circle with like, you know, learning drums as a child and then getting in high school and really being challenged and things like that. But you then had an opportunity to go back to our high school and instruct them. Wow. Like, mm -hmm. I kind of want you to talk about like what that experience was like and, you know, how you felt internally. Like, I know sometimes those can be like defining moments like, right. oh, wow, like. I really can do this. But like, right. how did it really feel in the moment to be doing that? Yeah. Uh, first of all, big shout out to Mr. Kurt Dog. Mr. Kurt Dog. <laughs> I appreciate you. That's like my musical father, uncle. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, that was a great opportunity. Um, it was interesting because I was so young. It happened coming out of school. I, it's probably like two years after I had graduated. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was interesting because the kids weren't that much younger than me at that point. Yeah. Um, I did it for about seven years. So, you know, that, that gap spread further. Mm -hmm. But, um, it was interesting because he made them call me Miss McQuarrie. And I'm like, they calling me what? <laughs> right. They don't call me that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, I had, to, I had to go with it. I had to realize that now this is my job. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to separate the fact that it's just a love for the drum line. And now this is my, you know what I'm saying, this is my job. Yeah. And, um, you know, then it got to the point where, you know, you know, I say things a lot. Like, I'm like, oh, that's wild. Or, you know, I have, like, different th uh, sayings and things like that I'll say. And um, they used to regurgitate them they used to oh, say yeah. them back to me and i'm oh, like yeah. oh like you're like that you're, teacher now you're showing into these people they're they're a mirror of you like mm. low key these are your kids mm. they're not my kids but those are my kids you yeah. know what i'm saying and so i kind of just had to realize that like it, it was bigger than me just showing somebody you know something about the drum line even they used to talk to me about things and so i had to really kind of realize what position of power i was in and how that affects them and how much I can yeah. change something for them. Yeah. Know? And that's pretty cool. Like I think about that all the time. Like, yo, we're the adults now. Like, I know we don't feel like it cause we yeah, in the same body yeah. and you know, time is just going on, but we really are like the adults now. Like yeah, these just, kids are looking at us by. time. Right. So we spent a little bit of time at Alabama and M together as well, bro. We've been rocking for a long yeah, it's time. Been pretty wild. You so, just following me. What's up with that? I guess you could say I'm following her, <laughs> <laughs> but I know that, you know, there was a point where you actually left the university and you came back mm -hmm. home and you kind of had to like really get on your feet. Mm -hmm. Is that where you kind of made the transition to playing drums a little bit more professionally or like what kind of impact did that have on the shift in your career? Um, probably the money <laughs> yeah if you if you want to continue to do music you know the only way for that to happen if you plan on like not having a job you know which at that time i did you gotta have make money money yeah. makes the world go around so either you're gonna get it from doing what you love or you're gonna have to go to the ship and get it that way yeah to be able to do what you love yeah and so it was just kind of like oh I can get paid to do these things. Not only that, you know, when we were in high school, we were doing gigs. Yeah, for we were. So it's like, we, we kind of were like vetted for that when we was in high school. But, um, but yeah, so just to be able to keep it going, I was like, I can't stop playing. Like, I want to do mm -hmm. more. I want to go on tour at one point in time, you know. So in order to be able to do that, you got to build those connections. You got to get out there. You got to know people. Sometimes that's really all it is, is knowing the right person, being yeah. in the right room. So. Yeah. And you took me to a lot of those rooms. When I came back from a and y'all, she had me like in the streets. Like, have you ever had yeah, a friend who's like, you really don't even go out, but because they're going, you're like, fine, I'll go. And like, I was a music geek myself. So I really appreciated that you like, took me under your wing and like brought me back in and like she really helped me to kind of like find my footing in like this music world and a lot of the people that I've had on this show if you've been watching you've heard me shout her out a million times this is the DJ Golden that we all talk about this is her right here so um I have to personally thank you for that because I know you know it's just for the love of music, at least for me. Like, right. I, I wasn't getting anything out of being at your rehearsals and stuff. I just wanted to be there. Y'all right. know I am the president of um, Smack Time. I am actually the president of the fan club of Smack, Smack Time. Time. Oh, man, that was a good time. Can you talk to us just a little bit about Smack Time? Like, okay. In case they don't know. Yeah, I was in a band. Um, 
It's called Official Smack Time. Mm -hmm. And it consisted of myself, a bass player, a keys player, and a guitar player, which mm -hmm. was uh, DJ, Thurston, and Jeff. Jeff! And it was just amazing because it was like we would come together and play this music, and it was just like it just happened. Mm -hmm. Every time. Know? And then it got to the point where, you know, we started making like original tunes and stuff, yeah. which, you know, never got recorded. Which I'm pissed about. I, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. But, you know, it, it was just it, like the chemistry was effortless, mm -hmm. you know. And so that was a great time. And I was able to, you know, take that union and go into Atlanta and, you know, do different things. You know, we Absolutely. played for Ashley. Yeah. Um, other people as well. But, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. And that's how I feel like you kind of, I feel like not that you didn't already like kind of have it in your mind to 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 lay groundwork and like do work for yourself but I feel mm -hmm. like being in that group and exposing yourself to all these different artists because we were all around the city with this group like y'all was everywhere and you know this was the time period where like the gallery was everything and you know like you you weren't doing it right if you weren't at gallery 992 on Monday nights like you just like it was just a whole different vibe but you know how did you then transition out of okay, I'm a drummer, I'm in a band, we're working, we're putting our, our thoughts together to be a collective, to kind of starting now to develop into this photographer, videographer. Mm -hmm. And I even see now that you're kind of like working with a different group. So how did that transition kind of happen? Oh, that's funny. Um, That, that was good. I like that. Okay, cool. <laughs> <It's> Ten points. <laughs> All right. Points. So, um, yeah, like I just, um, you know, one thing that people misconstrue a lot in, in working in music or just media for that, uh, for that nature, like, is you got to do footwork. Yeah. Even you talking about me, you know, starting out at Gallery 992 and then I end up being in a group, like everything is a process mm -hmm. and it's going to grow. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And so... It, even though it may not look how you want it to when it first starts, you got to give it time to get to where you want it to be. Absolutely. You got to keep going. And once you stop, then you failed yourself. Yeah. You know? So um, that that turned into many different things for me. You know, Smack Time, DJ moved back to North Carolina. So it's like, oh, what do we do now? Yeah. You know, I mean, clearly we had other other band members that were still there, but he was he was a good, a good solid part was, of that group. Yeah. Um, so then it became, okay, I want to still do drums. So I was just a drummer for hire. And then I was just playing for different people. Um, DJing. Okay. Let's get into that. Yeah. Let's get into that. Um, shout out to ham. DJ ham. If you've been watching, you know, y'all see how it's all full circle, bro. Anyway, let's keep going. DJ ham is my mentor and man, that man has been a great friend to me literally mm -hmm. since the day that I met him. Um, in ways that people can't fathom. Yeah. And um, he was just, you know, they have a, a collective. It's called like the the Famous Living Room. That's what they call it. They yeah. Do, they do content. Y'all go check out the content. It's pretty it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so, um, and so he was just kind of like, yeah, we, you know, we all got to be able to do this. So it's not just me, but there's another guy. His name is Solo. Um, and other people in the house had to learn how to DJ. But he was like, yeah, you're a drummer. You can already count. You already know how to do this. Mm. So I'm like, hmm, okay. He's like, yeah, I can get you gigs. So then it started me DJing in the skating ring. I started yeah. DJing in Sparkles in Smyrna. Um, and then now, you know what I'm saying? I'm at Cascade. Cascade with Never it. thought in a million years. I used to skate at Cascade. Never thought I'd be in the booth. Yeah. But it's turned to be beneficial for me because, you know, now even, you know, you mentioned other groups. Now I run with Melodic Touch. Yeah. Um, from my understanding, you interviewed CEO. Yes, I did. And CEO K did not come through and play with us. Okay. You so know, make sure y'all tune into that episode too. Tune into that one as well. But melodic touches, you know, like she said, a collective and it just, it really was beneficial for me in a sense that like now we have an event at Jamaican on Tuesdays mm -hmm. and I'm the DJ, you know what I'm saying? There's a live band, but it's like, it's like a central point for everything. Yeah. You know, if I need this person, I could call them. If I need this person, I can call them. And it's just like, it became a, a good networking for me, mm -hmm. a networking tool for me as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah. And it sounds like you're using your resources to the best of your ability. And I mean, it sounds like God is taking it all and like just putting it all together. Like yeah. things that you did way long ago that you didn't even realize would yeah. have an impact today. And so, before we kind of get into challenges and talking a little bit about the other side of what it looks like to be this super dope creative, mm -hmm. I'm sure if y'all tuned in last time, y'all saw that we threw a little monkey wrench in that episode. And I've re 
recently come across an idea that I like, and we're going to play a little game. So I'm going to pull out my handy dandy phone here, and I'm going to pull out these questions that I have for you now, you guys. So lately I've been asking these creatives to humble themselves enough to tell me who they look up to, people who we all know, people who we consider to be famous or whatever that looks like, just in a fun way to let's do a little bit of trivia. So DJ Golden didn't follow the rules. She did not send me her artist, but I've been friends with her long enough to know who they are. So I'm going to start you off. Should I tell her? I guess I'll tell you. So we've got two questions about Mr. Scott himself. And then we've got two questions about Mr. Day. Ah, ah okay, you see okay, where I went okay, 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 cool. Yeah, okay, so yeah. for Christian Scott, mm -hmm. what is the title of his debut project? Mm. That is crazy because I can see the album cover in my head. Uh -uh. Mm. I can't tell you. Rewind that. That was the first. That was one. the name of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, no, I, I can, I can tell you songs off of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know. Clearly, you know, I know the music. Yeah, you know yeah. that man. Yeah, yeah. Back and forth. Okay, so this next one, uh, it kind of shocked me as mm -hmm. well. But, um, you know, he's calling it a name completion rather than a name change. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what name does he go by now? And I'll give you a double whammy if you know why he changed it. Mm. I can't tell you why he changed it, but his okay. name is uh, Zion Atunde Ajua. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he 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 went. Uh, he did some kind of process where, dang, I can't even really explain it. But I, dang, yeah, he said he said I'm he wanted something. to be closer to like his heritage. Like he kind of. Um, I, when I looked it up, it said that it's like a Ghanaian mm -hmm. name. And uh, he said that he wanted his name to represent the struggle of his people. Yeah, yeah. And so um, I thought that was pretty cool, though. Yeah, he has, um, you know, he has like a twin. Yeah. And so, you know, their their grandfather was a, a chief. You know, mm -hmm. how they, how you have people, I guess, like marching in New Orleans. Probably, right. And stuff like that. Yeah, so like their their grandfather is a chief. And so they put on the, uh, the spy boy outfits and yeah. stuff like that. And so, you know, it's, it's a, and she's interesting for sure. Yes, you know, if bro. you haven't dived into it, one, listen to his music, but definitely follow his story. Absolutely. And we saw him last year at uh, the Jazz Festival. Whoo! Couldn't have gone with nobody better. Man, that was, it's that beautiful. was a time. That was a time. Okay, so I will give you, I'll give you one and a half out of two. Okay. okay so then number three, we're switching over to Mr. Day. What is Lucky Day's real name? Oh, girl. Mm -mm. <laughs> She's like, girl, I don't know. Lucky day. <laughs> okay, so how about this? Check this out. Lucky day's real name for all of y'all who do not know this. That man's name is David DeBrandon De Brown. Brown. David DeBrandon Brown. Interesting. Indeed. I see why he goes by lucky day. I'm just playing, man. Don't. Don't report my page. Yeah, uh, you, you did it on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh, my gosh. Okay, last one. You know this one. I know you know this one. What does Lucky Day say won't stop coming around? Karma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Because I, know, yeah. I know that's one that you like. That's yeah, one that yeah, you that like was, by him. That was good. That was okay, good. Okay, so we'll give her... Mm, y'all comment, let me know. Y'all think I should give her like 2.5 out of 4? It's giving 50%, which... To my knowledge, is an F. I'm gonna give you fifty percent too, though, because who my favorite artist for real? And we move on. Um, her. <clears throat> oh yeah, that's who I should have done. I know, but but Lucky Day is good too, though. But I would have should have done yeah. her. Girl, you like everybody though. I know. Come give on. me a pass. You got it. Everybody, give me a pass. Okay, look. So, <laughs> thank you for participating. Next time, follow the instructions. Um, seriously though, you are navigating many spaces, mm -hmm. and you're doing a great job doing it. But I need to know what in the world does that feel like? Like at any point, are you overwhelmed? Are you dealing with any challenges, overbookings? Like what does that kind of look like on the other side? Every day. I'm overwhelmed every day. I'm not, okay. I'm not okay. going to lie to you. <laughs> okay. I've, um, I've gotten more acquainted with this feature on my phone. It's called Do Not Disturb. Mm, good one. You understand? And, um, you know, I love y'all and I'll get back to y'all. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but no, seriously, it's, it's interesting, you know, one being a female, and working with, uh, you know, uh, overpopulated guy, yeah. you know what I'm saying, in, uh, industry. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's that's interesting because sometimes they'll try and it's just like, I'm, I'm not the one to go back and forth with. Yeah, you, you know, I know I'm this. Not. 
Um, and so, you know, it, it has its ups and downs, but, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Do you feel like they cross paths at all? Like the skills that it takes to be a DJ, then a videographer, a photographer, a drummer. Like, do you feel like they overlap in any capacity? Like, Absolutely. Like, yeah. um, music is universal. Mm -hmm. You know, music is a language. So, huh, funny example. I now DJ at Metro Diner on Saturdays. Well, Love Saturdays Metro Diner. Month. Metro Diner, um, they have karaoke. So, if y'all in the city, you know, hit me up. I'll let you know when I'm out there. But... These people came in there and they were from like Toronto and it was like, yeah, can you play some Punjabi music? No, bro. Cause I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I said, look, pull it up on your phone. Yeah. And so they pulled it up. They gave me like a couple few songs and I dragged them in and what I was able to realize were, you know, like they was the same BPM. So yeah. even though I didn't know the music, like to any degree, I was able to still mix it in for mm -hmm. them to enjoy themselves, you know? So saying all that to say is, you know, I'm able to count, um, because of my my band history and things like that so it definitely helps you know because some people don't understand those things and they yeah. got to work that much harder to try to you know stay up with everybody yeah. else but and that goes back to what ham said to you about like you're a drummer yeah like you already can count so yeah yeah i see you i see you bringing those all together and so you talked a lot about the different roles that you're playing right now different mm -hmm. people that you're working with experiences that you're having what would you say right now is the most rewarding thing that dj golden has going on oh man i don't know um i mean i guess people would think cascade yeah you know um cascade is great you know that's it's big for multiple reasons it was in the movie you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. if people come into atlanta and they go on skating like this they're is gonna the place go there mm -hmm. they're thinking to go it's central for everybody you know um but i like I like DJing with the band, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And you know, never you never know those two worlds might meet each other. Yeah. But yeah, I like I DJing with the band because it's just like um it's my first home. Mm -hmm. And so it's fun guiding them through, you know, what the vibe is for the mm -hmm. night. And then it hypes them up too. So it's just like, okay, y'all kinda y'all rocking with me. Yeah. All right, cool. And the more people hear me, the more good feedback I get. You know, so that's always encouraging. Support your friends, you know what I'm saying? Let them know when they're doing something good because you never know how much they might need to hear that or how that might make them keep going. Yeah, and you just actually kind of went into what my next question was going to be because you are such a big person of, like, community, but you also have a radar for, like, I ain't dealing with that if it ain't, if it ain't, <laughs> even, you know. <laughs> but I just, I kind of want to know, like, you know, if or how, rather, mm -hmm. you kind of make the decision on who you are and aren't going to work with. Like, because, I mean, with all of those different hats, you must have a high demand. Like, oh, mm -hmm. we got to get golden. Mm -hmm. So how do you kind of decide, like, yay or nay when it comes to these gigs? Well, for one thing, I don't tolerate disrespect. You know, there's one thing to have a, a, a disagreement in something, but to intentionally disrespect somebody that speaks on your character and I don't need to work with you. Yeah. Um. So, you know, there are those instances, there are instances where people are like, um, continuously inconsiderate it's like i got stress enough it just from what my position is mm -hmm. i don't need you adding to that by not locking in with the union yeah. when there are this is atlanta this is the music mecca for real for real. this in cali you know what i'm saying so it's like i don't really have to twist your arm to make you do what i need you to do it's other people out here who's looking for what i'm you know yeah so you know yeah it's, it's really not hard. You, you, if something feels off, listen to that, especially as females. Listen to your intuition. Yeah. Because sometimes people try to ignore it. And we're right back around in that same circle, knocking on that same door when you yeah. could have listened to it the first time. The first so. time. And then you put yourself in a sometimes compromising position where now you look like the bad guy because you pulling out of something you already committed to, but you knew beforehand you didn't really want to do it. Yeah. And that's something that I definitely have, have dealt with just – um trying to navigate room 1002 and like what yeah. I want that to look like and making sure that people don't feel stepped over, but also letting it be known, like without uh, saying this in a, in a, you know, uh, arrogant way, but it is a privilege to be sure. on this platform and, and really sit down and tell your side of who you are because every day 
as long as you have an Instagram or really just leave your house, someone else is determining who you are just from what they see, yeah. what they have heard, what they think they know. So, you know, I'm definitely working on that, like right. letting it be known. Like, I love y'all. I want y'all on my show, but y'all not going to come crap on Room 1002. We ain't doing that. We oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, like, most definitely not. I mean, like I said, it's, it's plenty of other artists out here. And the thing is, like you said, it, it is an opportunity where, you know, until you until you voice what you have to say, your image only consists of what's on your Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, this is allowing you the opportunity to have that candid moment yep. to really voice what you want people to hear and not what they come up with out of their exactly. own mind. Exactly. So I know you told us that you are at Metro Diner, you're at Cascade, different things like that. But mm -hmm. can you just tell them, you know, a little bit more about what to look forward to from you for this year? I know that it's what April, May now, but you know, like what's coming up for DJ golden. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. So yeah, I definitely, I got this series going on. It's called the golden experience. Um, I'm going to be doing more of those. So definitely look out for that. I've already had some pretty in a sense, big people on there. Yeah. You know? Can you break that um, down a little bit? Like what is the golden experience? Okay. The golden experience is just basically a space kind of similar to, you know, 1002, but on a live music aspect for artists to, um, spread the music that they want to spread. So like, for instance, I had Eddie Callier on the show yeah. and it was interesting with him because, you know, he was trying to figure out what song he was going to do. And I said, um, I said, we'll do love again. You know what I'm saying? Ready to love. That's yeah. his fault. Mm -hmm. And he said, wow. He said, it's crazy that you want me to do that song. He's like, cause I really love that song, but you know, I'm trying to, you know, keep up with these people who want me to do. And I'm like, nah, man, this is about what you want. The people yeah. to hear. This mm -hmm. isn't about that. You worry about that when you're with them. Yeah. This is about what you want people to hear. Yeah. So that's, you know, it's important. A little safe space or whatever. But all the artists that I think are amazing, mm -hmm. I'm throwing that up. Yeah. Okay. And then outside of the Golden Experience, mm -hmm. um, will you be continuing at like Metro Diner Cascade? Like, do you have a schedule for those things or we just maybe need to follow you and kind of keep up with where you Definitely got to follow me on Instagram. Those things are scheduled month to month. Okay. So even though I'm this month, I'm there every Saturday. Yeah. Um, who knows what it's going to be next month? I would right. say the best option would be just to follow me and you never know what new things that I'll be doing mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Listen, well, I have enjoyed you. I think that the people have enjoyed you. I hope y'all enjoyed her. If you didn't, don't even comment and say anything. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we will report was, you. <laughs> no, seriously. Like I told y'all in the last episode, we'll report you if you're being negative. No, I'm just kidding. Be honest. But seriously, um, I want to know, you know, you talked a good bit about influencing the youth. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell them? The ones who maybe don't go to Pebble Brook and you haven't coached them. Like if you just ran into, you know, a young man or a young lady out at Cascade and they're yeah. like, man, I love that you're a DJ, how can I become a, like, what kind of uh, advice really would you give to the youth about just trying to really get their footing in the music industry, regardless of whatever element they're trying to be a part okay. of? Okay. One, I would say practice, practice, practice. Um, nobody can determine what you're going to be except for you. Mm, so if good. it's something that you want to do, put your mind to that, put your effort into that and keep going. If you feel like you messed up, if you feel like, you know, it's not going the way you want it to do, if there's something you want to do, then keep going. You know, that's the only way for it to work. We look at these big stars like, oh, they're in this place. I want to be in this place. But it didn't all start there. Mm -hmm. You know, it, there's there's no there's no high without a low. So you got to rock on that journey. Keep going. And if you keep going, you're going to see the fruits of your labor. Yeah. And you're going to be good. Wow. Motivational speaker. Add that to the list. <laughs> you're okay. Corny. So corny. All right, so before we close out, I'm going to give you an opportunity to get some shout-outs. I know you did briefly in, in the interview, but are there any people who you just need to look directly at that camera and say, you the one, I love you, thank you for your support, whatever that looks like? Um, My family, my mom, first and foremost. You know, without my mom, like, really none of this would be possible. So mm -hmm. shout-out to my mom. I love you. Um, like I said, Ham, K, dang, you gonna put me on the spot because I'm yeah. definitely, I'm definitely gonna forget somebody. But Bria, you know what I'm I saying? Do. Because, like, like you said, since I've been doing this, you've been out here with me, and you know, sometimes that included me not being able to get to a gig because yeah. I don't have no ride. You know, for a while I didn't have a car. So thank you to you 
you know what I'm saying, for always being solid and yeah. making sure I, I got what I need, being I there when you. I need you to be there. I appreciate you. Yes, I love you. Yes, y'all, sir. this is my buddy for life. I'm telling y'all, this is my buddy for life. Yeah. Don't play with her. Like, don't. Don't play with her for real. Are you playing with me? Yeah. But, um, well, thank you so much, seriously, for coming out, for sharing your story. Even though I've been rocking with you this long, it does feel good to see you standing here confident in what you're doing. And you know I think you hot stuff. So keep going because so many people are being exposed to Golden Dream. I actually just dropped you in a group chat I'm in today. Like, we all, like, motivate each other about, like, our careers. And I'm like, y'all, I got three dope people coming into my show in these next couple of weeks. Make sure y'all follow them. And I sent your page like y'all better follow her and i'll know because i know her follow count but listen <laughs> i'm so weird I you are it. i just love it I, love I, I give you the space to do that you know what i'm saying and i appreciate our friendship yeah you know and i appreciate you and i appreciate y'all so listen do not forget to like and share this video if you were feeling anything that golden and i talked about man show us some love in the comments matter of fact if you're here on behalf of dj golden you never even looked at room 1002 but you came to show her love make sure that you comment below leave us some feedback y'all know that i'm always looking for creatives and people in atlanta trying to make things shake so don't forget to suggest me different creatives my dms are always open i've got links in my bio where you guys can leave me like their information so i can touch base but i am just so grateful and honored to always bring you guys new content from people who i think are wonderful and doing their best for the city of atlanta so until next time, y'all. Love and always. Peace. This is pretty crazy to think about. Room 10 You be on YouTube. You can find me out in the streets. All over Atlanta. I'm really grateful for y'all's support, man. Y'all just don't know.